<laughs> All right, folks, welcome back. It's Thursday and it's time for episode 23 of the 10 minute low poly modeling challenge. I said it again, low poly, the 10 minute modeling challenge. It's going to be low poly. Surprise. Anyway, I hope you've had a great week so far. I've been super busy myself. I hope you've been up to a lot of fun stuff as well. You know, I've been outside a little bit in the sunshine, but not so much because I've been inside a lot. I've been working on the RTS game. It's going great. I've, uh, last night until 5 a.m. I spent uh, making lots of sound effects. After a year of making the game, we're finally now getting into the sound effects. We've been so focusing on the gameplay and the whole uh, AI parts and the multiplayer and everything, all the units and maps and everything like that. So finally, 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 I decided to uh, set some time aside and I made about 100 and whatever sound effects so that was a lot of fun what else uh, this week I've done some modeling as well I've done uh, some high poly modeling surprise surprise I started to make a car I did that in 3ds max uh, about 20 years ago <laughs> but I did a Nissan skyline back then it was the r32 that was the hot one back then now it's the r35 th r no it's the r34 I did was it r32 r2 r2 <laughs> r2 d2 no that one anyway this one, anyway, that I'm modeling now is the R35, the GTR, but it's uh, taken forever. I started to model the, one of the side panels and the hood, or bonnet if you're in the UK, and I did a lot of subdividing. I have made sure that I had a quad topology this time, that's a must, uh, and then I also did some like holding edges to get all the subdividing good. And I'm happy with the result, but it takes forever, and it takes a lot of patience, something that I don't really have. So guess what? I made a low poly version. And then I thought, how many polygons can I trim away and still keep the shape of the car and still keep that low poly look? So I stripped a lot of polygons away, and then I thought, well, if I add some polygons? So I made uh, all the car parts, every panel and every wing and lights, and not light bulb, but lights and everything like that, and bonnet, bonnet I said it again, the uh, hoods and the trunk into separate objects, low poly objects, and then I brought that into Unity as well, and I thought I'll try to replace my uh, uh, old uh, low poly car just to see what it looks like. So that's what I've been up to this week. I'm actually going to make a tutorial of how to model this car. I'm going to do the low poly tutorial. First I'm going to show you how I model the car and uh, talk a lot about it. I'm not going to stress that video. I'm going to go through everything that I do, every little single step, the she keyboard short keyboard cord cut. Keyboard <laughs> cord cuts. Keyboard cord cuts. Keyboard shortcuts. You're going to be uh, looking at those instead of listening to this annoying voice. Wow, that's the longest intro I've done so far and I'm not even finished. If you've followed me in the past, you might have seen that I've done quite a fair share of floating islands through my time. I've done it for a few of the Ludum Dares. I did it for, for the robot power or running out of power. I did it for Blot, that uh, medieval Viking game. And then I did it for, oh yeah, my platformer with the Dominator guy that runs around and shooting all sorts of stuff. It's, uh, floating islands with some animated uh, tiles on that one. I even did a 2D version. I did uh, the Robbie copy one as well. Another Ludum Dare game. So that was more float. I guess it's just platformers. And then I even made a pixel art one. <laughs> so <laughs> why is it called I mean, a floating island? It's in the sky, it should be called flying, or at least hovering. Well, I'm not going to do a floating island today. All, all that talk, and I'm not going to do a floating island. I'm going to do uh, a suggestion that someone made, and it was uh, Ego Land Trip. Ego Land, no, Ego Trip Land. I have to look it up. Ego Land Ted, sorry about that. Uh, so Ego Land Ted suggested that I should make a regular island. Should it be a sinking island then, if it's not a floating island? Hmm, I guess it's just a regular island. You're right, Ego Land. Ted. I've also had a request to go through my setup video. I keep referring people to my Blender setup video, but just to recap and uh, see if I've changed anything around. So I've just started a brand new, fresh version of uh, 2.82 here. It, that's a lie, this is the same version I've always used. Anyway, this is the fresh scene at least. So this is what I do. I delete this default camera and I delete this uh, light here. But this one is untouchable. You're not allowed to delete this one. Every object that you create from now on must derive from this default cube. We have to save the default cube. I go into to, uh, this shading tab here and then just with the default material here I go to my desktop and you should go to the description of this video and download this little uh, palette that I've got because it's a palette that it's teeny weeny it's only two kilobyte in size it's a PNG file so but I drag this palette in and you could create your own palette in any drawing program. I used to download some palettes from low spec, for example, or I can uh, use it in uh, Photoshop or any paint tools or anything like that you can use just to create uh, a grid of textures. I only use eight by eight pixels now. And then I connect this color node to the base color node. And you can see that it's all smudgy and blurry here. And that's because we need to switch this from linear to closest because it's so few pixels that it tries to interpolate between those. And we don't want that. <coughs> corona. <coughs> Sorry, shouldn't joke about that. My mom actually had Corona, but she pulled through. She's 79 and uh, I was really worried, but she pulled through. So that's Swedish strategy for you. And then uh, we've got the two weeks in a row now, we've got the worst death count in the world in uh, comparison to the number of people that live in this country. Our neighboring countries, Finland, Norway, Denmark, 
good job guys you're doing it pretty good because uh, you have zero deaths at the moment whereas we have like a hundred a day so when i've created this material here i you, if you go into the uv editing tab here again you see that you can hardly see it here and that's because we need to zoom in here a lot all the way in just using the mouse wheel to here and that's how i see these colors here but then we also need to change the viewport here and uh, that i go to this little drop down here and i switch on to texture there and then i switch on shadow to get a little bit of shadow and then i also enable this is the million dollar one here even though it doesn't cost anything it's uh, you enable cavity and you drag this one up ridge valley that's how you get the shining edges that everyone's asking about and then you can go to also switch it from screen to, to both and then you drag this one up as well the ridge and the valley on that one and this is how i get that shiny look and i can quickly color these now if i tab into edit mode on this cube and press three on the keyboard to see the faces here then I can just, uh, you see here on the left now, I can just, if I have this face on the left side, I do A to select everything, scale, S to scale, zero. Creates a little tiny dot here, and then I can press G to move it, and I can move it to anywhere here. And if I select the whole cube, A scale, zero, and then move it to uh, blue, for example. That's how I get uh, that shiny look on my objects. All that, and I'm still going to load my default scene because I've got screencast keys set up there. So drop that one, everything's... I've lost my texture. Oh yeah, it's because I've copied it. Let's copy that one back there. And let's reload it. Reload! <laughs> Sounded like a game. Reload! Reload! Double kill. Double Mega kill. kill. Ultra kill. What? Monster kill. <laughs> Monster kill? You've been playing way too much Unreal Tournament. Okay, enough of that. Here we go. Ready? Ready! Ha <laughs> ha! Go! Now we're off. Tab into edit mode. Control I. Delete. And uh, faces, we're going to just use this one. Control snap it down, scale 10, tab out, control 4 to subdivide it, apply, control 4 to subdivide it even more. Now we've got a lot of detail here. So shift D to duplicate that one. We need it for the water. Top view, tab into edit mode. Let's uh, right click and control to make uh, the shape of an island. Actually, let's keep it consistent there. G and uh, actually, O first, we need proportional. G. Z, and then we have to scroll this proportional down a lot. We just want to raise the island a little bit like um, that. Let's make a volcano here in the center, shall we? Uh, so then we just keep. Uh, I'm going to do it manually instead of using any displacement here because I want to keep a little bit of artistic control, I guess, to this. Uh, so I just raise it on the Z axis a lot. Some offsetting here as well, maybe here. Scroll that one out, get some more slopes here. Okay. There, and let's continue with the volcano here. And now we're just gonna select the crater up here. Let's do it a little bit rounder, please. Like that. Uh, G, Z, and bring it down to there. So that's our crater. And uh, we should actually bring uh, scale Z zero. And bring this down a little bit as well, make it easier. Okay, and uh, now uh, that's our volcano. Now we should actually we should convert this whole thing to uh, brown first, because that's going to be the underwater color. And then we're going to do a side view here, Alt Z to see everything. Tab into edit mode actually, and grab everything apart from the base. Let's make that green. And uh, now I'm going to use uh, let's see Alt Z again. S let's do circle select now. So C and select some of these sharp edges here or steep ones, uh, because we want to try to do like um, a steep slope selection here. Uh, maybe not, Blender's not so great at that, but we can work around that a little bit. So let's get some steep slopes there. Some here as well, maybe. Okay, and now F3, select similar, normal. And then we can bump this up a little bit. Now we get uh, most of the sides at least. Maybe one more, two more, three more. Four more. <laughs> okay, let's enter on that one. A scale zero on the left side here in the UVs, 725 on the clock. Let's make a uh, rock color there. And uh, now we can uh, put a, dec a decimate uh, modifier here. We love decimating things. So <clears throat> let's decimate it to 0 0.1 to get the low poly look back. Apply that on. And here's our base for the island. Now we can uh, put some lava here. So C to circle select here. And like this control plus actually i can do and let's do scale zero on the uvs here and put that into orange lava 
and then scale Z, actually I need to disable this one first, scale Z zero, and then scale it out a little bit. Is that, oh, okay, I should touch it first actually. So I'm not working with the, that mesh there. And here I'm gonna put some lava pouring out, so it's okay that it's a bit broken there. We're gonna hide this uh, proper uh, cheating. So let's pour the lava like that. Um, we just grab this. Actually, we'll do I to inset this one, and then G to move it down a little bit, like this. And then Control Plus set. Uh, let's make a like a black edge around this, and then Control Minus again and put the lava color back. So there. That's our lava. Let's make some trees. So I'm doing six minutes. So let's uh, here shifts uh, shifts uh, S cursor to selected shift A. Let's do a cone here with eight faces and scale it down a lot up to there. Scale it down even more. Maybe uh, that should be okay. We're just going to do pine trees. That's all I've got time for. Uh, a scale zero. Let's make it a bit dark here. What happened to that? Scale zero. G. Let's make a dark tree there and uh, scale it down. Shift D, rotate Z, scale it down. Shift D, rotate Z, Shift D, scale it down. Okay, and maybe one more. Scale it down to there. Rotate Z. Okay, now let's select all of these and then switch to uh, vertex snapping here. And now I'm just gonna hold the control key to snap the height or the placement to a lot of vertices here. So we can get some, uh, it's a bit of a workaround. Maybe Blender is not the best at placing stuff. We can make low trees by just hiding it <laughs> partially in the ground. That should work. Uh, Shift D, let's just place a lot of trees here where it's green, where the grass is growing. Um, if I bring it up a little bit, I can help it along the way a little bit there. Shift D, let's bring that one up. Shift D, duplicate, Shift D, Sometimes you help, have to help it up a little bit uh, to get the height when you step up. Uh, make some small trees up there. Let's just keep doing trees. That's pretty much all the sort of detail I'm going to be able to make on this map. So maybe one there lives dangerously, by the way. Fire there. Okay, let's make a beach here. So let's do C, select this part here. Maybe not you. And then uh, A, scale zero here. Hello. Scale zero, and then mix a beach color, maybe that color. No, it likes too much light lava. Let's do it that way, and bring it down. Okay, that, that's it. And uh, now we should uh, bring. Uh, let's see, 354. Let's bring the water back. So here we go, and select that one. Bring it up. Oop, not you. I need to select this object. Shift space G, move it up, and then let's color this. Uh, tab here, color it blue, and then top view. Let's make uh, the shape of the island here as well. So I'll just select as if it's like foamy water here. So I like this. Okay, and then uh, we color that on a lighter blue like this. So it, um, that's it. Then let's do, uh, let's see, 315. So let's add a displacement to this one. And then uh, I'll just do new here, select, um, cloud texture, maybe two in size, and then uh, we can lower the effect on this one a little bit. Maybe to there, just to get a bit of shape to it. And then uh, we'll apply that one, because we're gonna decimate it. As usual, we're gonna decimate it. So 0 0.1, and it's decimated. Okay, we need to oh, apply that one first of all, and then bring it up so we get rid of that stuff that's hidden. So that's the smallest ocean in the world I just created. And uh, we can uh, do, the, we've got the beach. Let's do some cliffs here, 236. So I can do some cliffs here. Let's just select some random faces here, uh, like yours and mine maybe. That'd be random. Uh, G, and then actually we can select some more even. Let's make it a lot spiky here. Even down by the water, it should be cool maybe. G, and should I do maybe proportional? G, scroll it down. Make some steep cliffs there, and then we can do the same here. Select faces, it's a jagged island. Z, and then let's do some up here as well. G, Z, okay, 
and uh, maybe some here as well. It's an evil island. G Z. Okay, we could uh, 146. We have time to make a little water stream coming out here somewhere. So let's have the water pour out of here. Let's do circle select here and then let's make it pour down like this. I to inset that on. Oh, I've got some extra selected over here. I have to redo that one. It's, pour <laughs> it's pouring out of the volcano. How random is that? That shouldn't really happen, should it? But it's happening on this one uh, there. I to inset. Oh, what's going on there? Got some serious weirdness going on there. Let's just uh, work around that by deselecting that and selecting that instead. I to inset. I've got a bug, I think. I to inset. Oh, I have to deselect this tree. I've got a tree there. Get rid of the tree here. Move you out. Oh, I've got proportional editing. I'm all over the place. So this stream, I've wasted one minute of not creating the stream at all. Let's make them small trees there. Tiniest trees in the world. Okay, now I've got 45 seconds to actually make something I couldn't do in one minute. So let's try that again, shall we? Down to there. I to inset it. Control plus, no, actually control minus. We've only got 30 seconds to go. So bring it down to there. A scale zero on this side, make it there. And we can make some white water maybe here as well. There, there, here, and there. 18 seconds, let's make some white water rushing there. I've got to part of the tree there still. Nine, let's bring you out to there and bring you back to where you belong. Scale it down. Scale it up. Ah! <laughs> and we're done. Oh. So, ah, ta, 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 ta. Come on. Yeah, dismiss. <laughs> there we go. We've got a volcanic jagged island, boys and girls. Or boys and girl, I should say. I've got 3% uh, female watchers. So, hello to you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is um, a volcanic island. And uh, it's got some trees on it. A little stream coming out here from apparent, uh, it's really strange because it's lava up here and it's water down here. I doubt it highly that there will be any form of water here, but on this island it is. So I guess it's partly a magic island as well. We've got some jagged cliffs around the side here, some grass uh, or seaweed, I guess this is, that's growing on the side there because I don't think grass would be growing there. We've got a little bit of grass here and the water as well, apparently. We've got some uh, white foam uh, going around here. We've got a little beach here. Could have a little beach hut or something like that. Uh, all around, it's a pretty cozy island. I'd, uh, I wouldn't want to live there because it looks quite dangerous. Uh, we spent uh, over a minute and a half on uh, not creating a river here. And then I spent about 45 seconds creating a river there. So that was a lot of wasted time. I could have done something more valuable without maybe created a tiniest of hut or a little pier or something. But I guess I have to live with that. All right, guys, there you have it. Uh, so what should the tip be this week? Uh, we did a, a few new things, I guess, uh, this time. So proportional we covered last week. So that's not really new. I guess the slope select could be a tip this week. So what I did there was um, if you have something like uh, this island here. So if I select this one, default cube number one here or number two, that one. No, this one it is. Default cube number one. If you want to select steep edges, what I did was tab into edit mode and I pressed three to get into this little face select. I pressed C to get the circle select tool and then I just painted some uh, faces here that I knew that were steep. And I guess I could paint some of these as well. And you have to do it on all sides, not just on one side. You can't just tell Blender that I want steep edges, unfortunately. Uh, if you know a way to do that, please let me know because that would save me a lot of time. You press F3 and then you type select similar and then you press there and oh, press F3, select similar and then normal I did. And then you can use the slider here or the threshold. If you have, if you don't see that one, you can click it up similar and then you can uh, just uh, step how much similar you want those to be. So if you want to select, it'll do a rough selection. As you can see, it selects it on the tree as well. So I didn't make the trees beforehand. Then it's a little bit easier than to select the faces that you're going to color into this uh, rock color. So uh, you can get that little separation between the uh, green parts and the rock faces. If I tab into edit mode, you could uh, just select a few of these. I hold the shift key to select a few. And then with the proportional editing and quite a small radius, press G and then Z I did, but you don't have to lock it on the Z axis. Actually, you could uh, just uh, do G and move it by freehand to get some tilt to them. 
and then you can make jagged uh, rocks quite easy that way. It's quite cool when you don't move them to the z-axis because then you can get that they're pointing in like this. And you could also, I guess, make some crystals or something. Let's say this was a, a treasure island. And uh, here, if I were to press C, circle select a few of these. Circle select is because I've got this little customizable circle here. Let's select that, press enter, A scale zero, and then let's make that dark because this is a, a rich site of something here. Something happened in the volcano here. The immense pressure that for some reason isn't pushing this water out, but the immense pressure here created some crystals. So if I select uh, a few of these faces now, like this, maybe not that one, but that one, hmm, very sensitive here. G to move it, and then you can use the proportional, but let's say we wanted it like this. And then I guess now, I haven't done a lot of extrusion, so now S to extrude, S to extrude, S to extrude. S to extrude. And we can do period here and go into individual origins actually. E to extrude, S to scale that one down. And now control plus a few times. And then we can turn these into some uh, pink crystals or something like that. So if you want a rich site of uh, some valuable, uh, it annoys me that that is visible there. I should just re-click that one. There we go. No, nope, that's no good. Let's create an object over here. I don't want to create the cube because then the default cube will feel... Okay, sorry, there we go. So yeah, that you could create some crystals maybe or something like that. And also uh, one more tip. A lot of them feel like uh, providing a lot of tip this one. And that was uh, when you move the trees here. I press uh, L. So L selects linked vertices. And if you don't know what a linked vertice is, it's uh, vertices that are linked to each other. <laughs> and even though these, uh, the top of this tree here is overlapping this tree, no vertex on this top here shares a vertex with the bottom one or the one below it. So if I press L when I'm hovering over this tree top here, it just selects those faces. I mean, still in the same object and everything, but that's a really handy way. And the, the nice thing here is that you can actually do L, 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 just to select the ones that you want here. And then, so the tip was that I switched up here into snap to vertex. So instead of pressing G and then, oh, I have to press O now to disable proportional. If I press G now, I wanted to place this tree. Um, it's difficult here to place it on the ground, but if I hold control now, it'll snap to that vertex there. And it still does it a little bit wrong sometimes when you step up a slope, uh, but it does help to, to if you if you need to speed model for whatever stupid reason, you might have to do that. Maybe you're making YouTube videos, then it's quite a handy way to place them. At least even as a helper, maybe you could use it. Even if you do it uh, in a non-speedy fashion, you could use it a little bit as a helper. I use it quite a lot when I position things. I guess that was pretty much the tips of this week. I don't think there was anything else uh, too magical about this one, but I did get curious now because I saw, what happened if I do this? I saw something there that I hadn't seen before. Uh, what was I even just doing then? Oh yeah, when I press L, linked, I didn't realize there was a little pop-up here. Normal, material, seam. Okay, so you can delimit it by UVs even. Huh? Are you kidding me? <gasps> Power up! No way! Oh my god, that is good. Okay. A game changer, boys and girl. Ha! <laughs> that is cool. I can delimit it by the colors. <gasps> Ooh, I'm excited. A lot of uh, talking there for a video. I hope everything's all right. I hope you're doing all right. I hope you didn't fall asleep. Oh yeah, the Discord is blowing up. I said that last week, but I should. I just want to say it again because uh, it's nice to see. We've got over 500 people there, a nice community of uh, Blender and Unity people now, all joining in, chatting away. I'm in and out every now and then. Mostly I'm working on stuff or prepping videos and things, but I drop in every now and then. And you should join that one if you haven't uh, seen that one already. Maybe you can find some help there or just hang out with uh, like-minded people like ourselves. So join the Discord, I'll put a link in the description. I said earlier this year that it was going to be a great year. I think it was in the uh, 
one of the first videos that I did is the Star Destroyer. And I said that 2020 is going to be a great year. And then Corona happened. So for a lot of people, including myself, I guess it's not that great of a year. But you should try to make the best out of it. Try to spend the time with the, the close family if you've got some of that. Or make uh, games and uh, Blender, learn Blender and Unity and uh, make yourself a little prototype and game and have some fun. For me, it's pretty much no difference. I spent most of the time inside sitting in front of the computer doing this anyway. So Corona or no Corona, it's pretty much the same for me. But it would be nice if it gone away pretty soon. So let's hope for that. Until next week, anyway, I hope you're having a great one. I hope you hit the thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next Thursday for another 10 minute modeling challenge. Bye for now. Also, did I mention that I've got a Patreon? <laughs>